I know many of you are probably thinking, well, I know why I'm here. But I think the bigger question of why we need to turn our collective attention, the attention of our organizations, our systems, to this issue is uh, worth revisiting. I want to encourage you to think about the big long-term things, but also what can we do now? Go marching in nice. One of the things, of course, that we know happens with singing is the release of oxytocin. And science is now backing up what all of our ancestors knew, what everybody knew, what happens when you sing together, and how our bodies are transformed through singing, how um, group dynamic has changed through proximity and the intimacy of singing. There's been really um, quite an exciting movement of validation. And for some folks, that's really great. Come and carry me Who feels more connected, more intimate, more well in their bodies right now. It's really interesting to me that pain lives with um, <laughs> me, the director of strategy. And what's, what's significant about that is that it's been identified internally within our kind of you know, bureau health bureaucracy as a very important issue that we all need to pay attention to. But also it doesn't have a natural home. It doesn't fit into any of our boxes. And, and we need to find a place for it to sit and, and um, find some motivation through the system. When the emergency department is congested, when people's surgeries are being bumped, you can't ignore that. And so it's difficult to shift resources into home and community and to self-management and primary care when you're still putting out fires at the hospital. But we have at least created a roadmap for doing that and slowly and surely we're, we're getting there. So you're going to find a, a shape and a place in the space that you think embodies a person with pain, whatever feels right to you, it could be, it could be whatever, and you're going to say just one sentence about the experience of a person living with pain. Whatever comes to you is the right one. It's very difficult to be me. I feel pulled in all sorts of directions. Your pain is not real. I'm getting dragged into this whether I want to or not. <laughs> Small inputs result in huge improvements. Unlike the uh, bureaucracy-bound cities, single people, and I can see some of you around here, and so I'm relying on you guys to help me, can, can stand up and make huge improvements in people's lives. So I want to thank you, first of all, for again, for being here today and for helping inform me and uh, my uh, great team at the ministry in creating public policy that helps uh, British Columbians because uh, we really want to be the best healthcare system across the country and across the country we want to lift our whole healthcare system as it, as it compares to other Western industrialized countries. We know there's there's some work to do there and whereas we spend getting close to 19 billion dollars every year in the Ministry of Health, over 42 percent of our provincial budget, we know that with your help we can direct those dollars in a more effective and efficient way and the result of that will be better patient care for all British Columbians. Maybe there's somebody that cares. I can't just let them do what's best for them in their doctor's opinion. Ongoing learning and listening. I believe you. I still have pain, but I'm feeling more supported. 